Well, you didn't really expect Hillary Clinton to go away, did you? Well, she didn't, and today she delivered a commencement address at Wellesley College, where she went. Surprisingly, she gave the address herself, rather than sending John Podesta to give it for her. Ooh, sorry, a little election night joke. What she said may be as well as a, it might be considered a preview for her next run for something. Watch. We were furious about the past presidential election <laughs> of a man whose presidency would eventually end in disgrace with his impeachment for obstruction of justice. After firing the person running the investigation into him at the Department of Justice. Well, of course, the other cable stations love it so much that almost none of them have corrected Hillary Clinton by pointing out that, contrary to her claim, Nixon was never actually impeached for obstruction of justice. Perhaps she confused him with her husband, who was. But that was not her only shot at Trump. There is a full-fledged assault on truth and reason. Drumming up rampant fear about undocumented immigrants, Muslims, minorities, the poor. Some are even denying things we see with our own eyes, like the size of crowds. <laughs> Meanwhile, the former candidate also gave an interview to New York Magazine, conducted by fawning abortion activist Rebecca Traister. Whoa, what a puff piece it was. But interesting, throughout the whole thing, Clinton never says word one about her own culpability for losing the campaign. Instead, she spread the blame elsewhere. At one point, she says, quote, what I was doing was working. I would have won had I not been subjected to the unprecedented attacks by Comey and the Russians, aided and abetted by the suppression of the vote, particularly in Wisconsin. That's right, she didn't visit Wisconsin once during the general election, but her poor showing there was because of voter suppression, the Russians and Jim Comey, also sexism. She also makes the bold, and by that we mean deranged, claim that, quote, we're up against an even greater domination of the media by the right. Because, you know, you've noticed that recently. Really, the press is dominated by the right. It's unbelievable. They control everything. Are you ready for Hillary to run again? Will she have anyone left to blame by the time that campaign is over? Crystal Ball may know. She's a Democratic strategist and former congressional candidate, and she joins us tonight. Crystal Ball, thanks for coming on. I was sympathetic thanks to Hillary, me. kind of. I'm always sympathetic to people who lose and are humiliated until I read this piece in New York Magazine, which is, like, deranged. And in <laughs> it, she blames, quote, voter suppression for losing a state that she never bothered to visit. I don't know any Democrats who believe that's true. Why would she say something like that? Well, I think she has definitely been trying to explain her loss. And she says things like, I take responsibility. But then she also does want to shift the blame to things like voter suppression and James Comey and the Russians. So, I mean, I actually agree with you a lot on this, Tucker. I do think that it's possible to say, look, maybe if Jim Comey handles things differently at the end of the campaign, maybe things do go a different way. But ultimately, Donald Trump did not run an amazing campaign. He was not an amazing candidate. He was highly polarizing, and when Election Day came, a majority of Americans were saying he's unfit for the presidency. Hillary Clinton should have been able to win and should have been in a position to win, even with the slings and arrows of Russia and Jim Comey, et cetera. Um, I talk a lot about this, actually, in my book, Reversing the Apocalypse. I think the Democratic Party as a whole has really strayed from their their roots as a party of the working class focused yeah. on those economic issues that Trump really did touch on. So, look, I, I didn't want her to run in the first place. I was a, a Joe Biden uh, supporter, and then I was a Bernie Sanders supporter. I think there were a lot of problems there. But I also think the problem goes deeper with the Democratic Party if you just look across the country well, that's for at sure. all the governorships and the state legislative seats and all of that that we've lost. I think we've got to do a lot more soul searching than saying Russia and voter suppression. Yeah, and, and, and racial division. I mean, I got to say, though, I was surprised a little bit um, even for Hillary to see just how unwilling she is to come to terms with what happened. And, you know, Trump is often attacked as delusional and he believes things that are demonstrably false, etc. Hillary certainly does, based on this interview. I mean, if she believes the things that she says, she says this, for example, I have a lot of sympathy for voters in a lot of places I didn't win because I can see how hard it was. She's saying that because. She's spending her time, she says, looking at Google algorithms that show where people search for WikiLeaks. And people who read the WikiLeaks dump were so hoodwinked, she feels sad for them. 
Hmm. I mean, that's like, that's crazy. The WikiLeaks dump was real. I mean, whatever you think of the dump, like, a normal person wouldn't say something like that, do you think? Well, I've never lost a presidential race, so I, like you, have a lot of sympathy. I have lost a congressional race, but um, I, I, like you, have a lot of sympathy for what that must be like, and especially when, obviously, she's spent many years preparing, many years thinking about this, two bites at the apple, et cetera, et cetera. But ultimately, to me, the, the problems with the party go so much further than right. Hillary Clinton. In, in a way, she's sort of the symptom of the problems of the party, that we would think she would be the best candidate for this moment no, when people exactly are, right. are looking at the future and saying, How, when are my wages going to rise? What does the future look like for my kiddos? And so we've got to have people who can speak credibly to that experience and don't have all this baggage of you know six-figure Wall Street speeches and sitting on the board of Walmart and all of those things from her past. We really need new leaders and new faces. No, I in the think party. I think that's an entirely fair point. A, a healthy party would never have nominated her or allowed herself to be bulldozed by the the, the Clinton cartel. So I want to get back to the the Comey thing. She the sure. one thing I kind of agreed with in her complaints is that Comey hurt her. I mean I think that's that's just yeah. true. I'm not saying that for partisan reasons, obviously, but he went and said she'd committed some wrongdoing but wouldn't specify what it was. I felt it was unfair at the time. And she's mad about it. I, I get it. But then she's also mad that Trump fired this guy who behaved in an out-of-control way. How can you think Comey was doing things no FBI director ought to do and that he should keep his job? I don't understand it. Well, he shouldn't have kept his job at the time, and what he did was um, completely out of bounds and definitely did hurt her. And, and, and he has ex himself expressed that he did not want to put his finger on the scale in a partisan way. But by the time that President Trump decided to fire him, he was then in the middle of an investigation. If you were going to get rid of him, then get rid of him right out of the gates. Not when he's already into this investigation and not after, by the way, that you've, you know, you've said you want his loyalty and also, by the way, maybe lay okay. off of okay. Michael but, Flynn. I mean, That's look, what I, makes it inappropriate I, I half here. Agree, I half agree with you that okay. the president should have canned him day one. It was obvious to everyone watching there was something weird about Jim Comey. He would get up his high horse and couldn't dismount. But if he's bad for the country in January, he's bad for the country in April and May. So, like, I don't, I, why can't Democrats just celebrate the removal of a crummy FBI director? It seems pretty simple. <laughs> I wish it was that simple, Tucker. I really do. But when you're in the middle of an investigation involving the president and his campaign, you can't help but feel that this was an effort to um, put pressure on the organization to pressure Jim Comey. There's just a lot of questions around the way that firing well, happened. Well, it certainly didn't work, <laughs> whatever the intent. Crystal, thanks for joining <laughs> us tonight. I appreciate it. Always great to see you, Tucker.